Welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. I'm Justin Davis and today I am here to give you an updated video on what to fly for long range in 2024. We recommend that you fly a seven inch. We're also gonna talk about the brand new VTX that came out that's gonna kind of change the game for long range FPV. And why do I say that? Well, AKK has been around for many, many years and been producing some of the world's most powerful video transmitters, most recently with their 10 watt edition. But that one is a little bit larger format for fixed wing currently uh, and larger multi-rotor. So today we're gonna to talk about how to set up your seven inch for flying long range in, in 2024. And this is the brand new 30 by 30 mount VTX that's running up to five watt on a seven inch or anything that you can install a 30 by 30 VTX to. So this is kind of one of, this is a big deal. This is one of the biggest, most powerful 30 by 30 mount VTX is on the planet right now. So I will put a link down below for these as well as my favorite batteries. We're gonna talk about what flight controller and ESCs I'm currently using and what radio system. And finally, we're gonna talk about what motors you should use, what KV specifically and what size for a seven inch build. So let's go ahead and get started with what's current for 2024 long range FPV. Now we'll start out with the GEP RC Crocodile V3 right here on the bench. This is the DJI 03 version. And truly, honestly, if you're gonna fly long range, I don't recommend the DJI 03 for extreme long range. If you want to fly extreme long range, buy this as a kit and build your own with the TX5000 from AKK. This right here on the back will go further than any DJI system on the planet for DJI 04 and DJI 03. 5 watt will get you way out there, but it is analog video, so it's not gonna look as pretty as DJI video. And if you're wondering why we picked the Croc 75 V3 over something like the Moz 7 or even the Chimera 7, which is also legendary, this one tested out with the longest flight time on the 6S 8000 Lion packs that we had, getting us up to 35 minutes flight time or more. It is a really streamlined frame. It is the lightest of the pack. Even though it's boasting 1350 kV motors on here, I'm still able to get the longest flight time with this configuration. And it will be even even lighter with the analog version versus the DJI 03. And the motors we're running on here are the 2806.5 motors of the 1350 kV. And even though I prefer 1250 kV, it seems that these are pretty efficient. If you can find some motors for your build, and I'll put some links down below, the 2806.5s at 1350 are great. Find some 1250s if you can, even 1150s back in the early days of the Croc. I believe the original one had 1250 kV, and that is probably the sweet spot between 1150 kV and 1350 kV. KV. any more or any higher than that and you're kind of kind of give yourself more amp draw and a little less flight time than you would if you're under 2000 kV super important when you're running 6s lion packs on a seven to seven and a half inch long range FPV drone and I know some people are probably going to be asking Justin which prop do I use and right now probably my favorite props out there are the HQ props and these are 70 75 props they have a medium cord in the center with a really nice thin tapered tip here, giving me kind of a quiet seven and a half inch prop, but also really efficient with the tri-blade. We've also tested the bi-blade props that you see hanging up in the back of my YouTube channel versus the tri-blades here. And we ended up getting the longest flight time with the tri-blades versus the bi-blades, which normally we thought were the most efficient, but this year it seems things have changed. And this is another one for the DIY crowd. If you're building your own seven inch for long range, a really great flight controller ESE combo for 2024 is from HGLRC. It's the most current Spectre series. You have an F7 flight controller and the Spectre 60 amp ESCs. They are BL Heli 32, but you could also update them to AM32 in the future if you want to. It does come with the harness that connects to the flight controller and it's pretty easy to mount up. It will install inside the Crocodile V3 and it has a 20 by 20 mount setup. And it's probably my most recommended flight controller and ESC setup for long range seven inch FPV drones in 2024. And this little device right here, this is the first five watt 30 by 30 VTX that has been made on the planet. This 
It's game changing because it's so powerful and it will mount to a 30 by 30. AKK has been leading the pack as far as analog long range FPV for almost, it seems like eight years now. They've been around for a while. Uh, and this one is just groundbreaking again because five watt on a 30 by 30, no one's done it yet. There are other VTXs out there that run up to about two watt on the regular for 30 by 30, such as the GEP RC Maiden. This one comes in at 1.6 watt on a max, as well as a two watt version of this. This one is coming out of the box at five watt. It will do also uh, one watt, two watt, and around 500 milliwatt down to 25 milliwatt, and it'll also do pit mode. It also has a giant heat sink all the way around it and a built-in fan. It has a physical fan on the very top, which I've been talking about for years in long range FPV. Very similar to an RC car ESC with a physical fan. It's just gonna keep you from having blackouts at distance when you're running a higher milliwatt and full on five watt. So this little device right here is my best pick right now for 2024 for a 30 by 30 seven inch long range VTX. Now, some of you are probably sitting there thinking, what antenna do I use with such a powerful VTX? What could I possibly run with five watt that would really give me the best image back to my goggles? Don't even think about using something like this. This is an MMCX connector style dipole antenna. This is great for safe short range or proximity, uh, maybe medium range if you're running five watt on something like that. But what I recommend using is the SMA connector with the MMCX on this side, plugging this into the port right here. And now you can use any type of antenna on the end. So my recommended antenna right now is the dual long range 5.8 right hand circular polarized Momota 2. This one just came out. It has an extended size on this one. It is much longer than the standard size one that comes on the seven inch. This is around 10 to 11 inches with the dual right hand circular polarized antennas inside there, which is really nice. You can also get the singular version and this is the standard seven inch length right here. You can kind of see the difference between the two. So uh, if you want to go the furthest distance with the best penetration back at altitude and range, this dual antenna from GEP RC is going to be the best one that you can pair up with the AKK five watt transmitter. Uh, just this setup right here would be legendary. Now, when it comes to batteries, all batteries are not the same. You have to understand that. If you're flying a LiPo on a, a long range seven inch quad, that's fine. If you want to get longer flight times, I recommend using Lion packs. Now, Lion packs, you can supposedly run them down to about 2.6 on the minimum cell voltage per cell. I wouldn't do that personally. You can be pretty safe coming back home with around three volt per pack, but you wanna be right back on the landing point when you do that. Uh, and typically what I do is I come back with about 3.2 volt per cell. Uh, one of the most important things you need to put up on the screen for your OSD is the average cell voltage and watch that when you're flying a Lion pack, it's super important. And your average cell voltage can dip lower than your standard LiPo pack. So um, that's gonna be a different cell voltage reading altogether. You might wanna study up on Lion packs before you start trying to fly a Lion pack at range. They will get super hot if you drive them down to 2.6 volt per cell, I've done it. This is a great series from Lumineer. This is the Nav series, a 6S 6000 pack. This one would get me around 25 minutes on a seven inch, but if you really wanna get into the 30 minute plus game, you're gonna to have to run something like the domestic upgrade energy packs. These are about $200 a piece. This is the dark lithium version. I got this last year and I'm still running these packs. They are super nice. They have a little less version uh, for a little bit less. You can get the red packs uh, and they're just a little bit less um, from, from what this one's able to do. This one's 9AH and this one's a 10AH. So if, I, if money was no option, I would go with the 10AH version and this will be one of the best packs you've ever owned in your long range FPV career. Now everything up until this point of the video has been pretty straightforward as far as what's great in 2024. There's not going to be a whole ton of argument, but everyone's different. So someone else might come in here and make a comment. Oh, I like this better or I like this better, but have they tested what I'm actually showing you here today? Probably not. So everyone has an opinion on the internet about what they like 
but they haven't actually tested. It's insane. So if you've tested both, great. Make a comment down below and say, hey, Justin, I think this is better than that or this is better than that. So right here, you're looking at TBS Crossfire, the original OG full blown version right here that will do up to two watt. Now this is running on 915 megahertz with the antenna on the top. That is the diamond shaped antenna. This is the one I recommend. It will get you the best range. You will see people all over the world using this particular setup. There is another version of this that you can get on like Amazon. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. it is the light version. It's the kind of the, the smaller sissy version. It doesn't have the uh, LED screen in the back, which I, I recommend that because you can go up and you can bind pretty quickly on here. So I guess the biggest controversial thing about this post is that, well, this is TBS Crossfire and the world is moving toward ELRS right now. Currently, you can do ELRS with 2.4G, or you can also do it with 915. Uh, I do have some 915s that I'm testing. There is also a really awesome Gemini system coming out for ELRS from a manufacturer that I can't speak of right now. But as of this making of this video, this is my most reliable and safest range module that I've owned in 10 years of flying long range FPV. I can send this down a canyon or up a mountain and not worry that I'm gonna drop into the water. The next biggest thing that you have to know is that GPS is probably your most important friend in long range FPV. If you're not running a GPS on the back of your drone, you're asking to drop into the mountain somewhere or into the water. So you wanna make sure that you have field tested your GPS. And the most current modern version of GPS out there to put on your drone is the M10 GPS system. Put that one on there, field test it, make sure that your return to home is working and that it's not set to drop out in the wild. Uh, you will absolutely lose your quad out in the wild and then you'll be crying about it because it'll be in the river somewhere. So don't do that. Make sure you run Crossfire to start out. Get into ELRS later. This is nice because this auto updates the RX to match the module from the module and you don't have to connect it to the internet, the Wi-Fi or anything. It's pretty awesome. It is more expensive than ELRS, but still in August, 2024, it's what I trust the most. And now that we pretty much talked about all of the stuff you put on the quad, the RC link, the module, you can get yourself a Boxer Max if you want to. I like the Boxer series because it's just, works for me and it's a mid-size radio and it has a full-size JR module bay in the back. Just get it, you'll love it. Uh, people in our channel like it. Now we're gonna talk about goggles and currently what I use for analog FPV, at, if you wanna go far, farther than DJI 03, um, you want to use some analog FPV. And these are my Skyzone 04X goggles. These are not cheap. They are about $500. They have a built-in physical fan. They also have this module built into the side right here, which is replaceable. You can take it out. You can use something like rapid fire if you want to. Uh, they have a bunch of different modules out there. I am using the one that came with it. Um, it is the O4X Pros, by the way. So uh, it has that fat cord strap in the back. And I've seen these used all over the world. Um, even like out in the Ukraine, people are using these for just to have the, you know, the best type of connection possible. Now, as far as antennas, I'm using the right-hand circular polarized AX2s still from Lumineer. So this is the shorty right here, just going out this direction. I don't even have a patch antenna set up right now because this just works and it's, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, as far as the longer one here, this is just the long range version of the AX2 uh, RC, a RHCP, right hand circular polarized antenna uh, for 5.8 video. Working great out of the box and it really does get way up there uh, for making sure you have the best view back to your goggles. And with this type of setup, you don't even really need a ground station. It works pretty great. If you are gonna get serious about running long range setup, you wanna build yourself a, a ground station with a tripod and get your antenna up high in the air so you have the best video back to your goggles. So now you know 
for some type of roadmap to go by in 2024 to build up your own. Maybe we can do a build video coming up. I do have a frame over here that we're gonna play around with. There are other VTX and video systems out there. I would suggest if you're, if you're going for the maximum range, do analog. If you wanna play around and experiment, play around with some uh, walk snail. There's also HD zero, and you can play around with DJI 03 if money's no option, and you're not worried about uh, really flying at extreme distances. But for extreme distances, this type of setup will do you the best, and it will get you back at home in one piece. Just make sure that you field test your GPS return to home so you're not dropping to the ground. The worst thing at flying long range is going out there and fail safing and just dropping into uh, the grass somewhere. Battery flies off. These are pretty heavy batteries. And then you can't find your quad. Uh, so you and your friends are walking a grid in the woods or the field trying to find your quad. It's not fun and I've, I've done it before. So um, I definitely recommend getting GPS, set it up, make sure it works in Beta flight or iNav, whichever one you're using, and you'll be a happy FPV pilot. So I appreciate you watching this video. You can find links in the video description of everything that I showed you here today and learning how to fly long range FPV in 2024. It's better than it's ever been and you have the most options you've ever had, but it can be confusing for people. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button because I will give you more advice on long range FPV, tiny whoops, five inch freestyle and fixed wing and even RC helis and stuff right here on the drone camps channel. We do it all you guys. So take care and I will see you on the next one.